So far in this series, we've talked about how to identify a bandit's intentions and how a reversal works, but we haven't talked about how to defend against a gun attack. There are a few tactics we can use, which we'll cover in this video, and as a bonus, I'll show you an exercise that pulls together all the defensive BFM tactics we've covered so far in this series. We know that a bandit going from lag pursuit to pure and then to lead is a good indicator that he's about to take a gunshot at us. Doing nothing and continuing on a predictable path just makes his job easier. We want to present as many problems as possible for him so that we can drag out the fight. Remember that as long as you're still alive and have a working aircraft around you, you're winning the fight. We have some tools available to us to present the bandit with problems in this situation. The tighten down maneuver, out of plane maneuvering, and the jink. All three of these maneuvers capitalize on the fact that a bandit that's close enough for a gunshot is also susceptible to an overshoot. So they present the bandit with a lot of range, angle, and enclosure problems. The tighten down, or TD, is simply put, pulling back on the stick when already in a turn. Since we should already be in a sustained rate turn while on the defensive, we're going to cash in some of our saved up energy for a little extra turn rate. This does a couple things to make the bandit's job more difficult. First, it moves your vulnerable rear quarter farther away from the bandit. Here's the weapon employment zone, or WES, used in USAF training. This 45 degree AA zone is where the bandit needs to be for a valid AIM-9P shot. By turning, you're pushing the bandit outside this zone and increasing the heading crossing angle. The other thing the TD does is slow down the defensive fighter. Remember that whenever we go above the PS0 line on our EM diagram, then we start to lose energy. The TD is going to take us from our sustained rate turn to a much higher turn rate. With this sudden drop of speed, we would be introducing a high closure rate problem for the bandit. The bandit would then be forced to repo to satisfy the rule of threes. This is what that would look like. The bandit would drift to the aft as he's forced in a lag. So what does it mean when the bandit has a high heading crossing angle and a high LOS rate? If you set a reversal picture, then you're correct. A tighten down maneuver can result in a reversal opportunity, but if it doesn't, don't give up. We still have some other options, like the out-of-plane maneuver. A sustained rate turn is going to be your best game plan in a lot of BFM scenarios. When you're in a sustained rate turn, you can expect the bandit to be turning on the same plane of motion as you to line up a gun solution. Moving out of that plane of motion will make things harder for the bandit. That's what the out-of-plane maneuver is all about. To execute an OOP, you want to do an unloaded roll. So push the stick forward to get under 1G, but stay out of the negative. Reset your lift vector, and then smoothly pull back to get onto the new plane of motion. The exact direction of the new POM is up to you. During this maneuver, it's important to keep the roll unloaded. Then give the jet enough time to start moving in your new POM before doing any follow-on maneuvers. As part of the OOP, you want to assess the bandit. With the change in plane of motion, we have the potential for a reversal opportunity. If you see high LOS due to high HCA and or close range, reverse. Otherwise, continue with the turn. Now let's take a look at the OOP in action. All I do here is an unloaded roll to get my lift vector off the bandit, and then I follow up with some gentle back stick pressure. Then I just repeat in the opposite direction. This is why the unloaded roll is important. It gets me onto a new plane of motion quickly, which makes it harder for the bandit to follow. You can see just how difficult it is for the bandit to get a good shot while doing several of these OOPs. And they don't cost a lot of energy. There's one last thing we can do if a tighten down or OOP doesn't work for you and the bandit is about to take a shot. It's called the chink, which you can think of as a combination of a tighten down and an OOP. Jinx are last ditch maneuvers to spoil POM and create closure. Each jink will use up a lot of your saved up energy, which could leave you in a more vulnerable position. So keep this option as a last resort. You only ever want to use this when you see the bandit pulling lead for a gun solution. To execute a jink, you should set your power to idle, unload the jet, and roll to set the lift vector below the bandit. 
That's the part that's like an OOP. The next part is a more aggressive version of the tighten down. Perform a maximum onset rate, two hand, stick in the lap pull, and hold until the aircraft aerodynamically stalls. This is a pretty serious pull, and as you probably guessed, it's going to slow down your aircraft drastically, which will give the bandit more problems to deal with. That's going to force him to repo, which will give you an opportunity for a reversal. But if you don't see the reversal picture, then try another jink. Idle power, unload the jet, and set the lift vector on the opposite side of the bandit. Do another aggressive pull on the stick to force closure. You'll continue this until the bandit is forced to repo. Here's what it looks like in action. We start with the jink below the bandit's plane of motion. That wasn't enough for a reversal, so we jink a second time to the opposite side of the bandit. Now we're neutral, and a third jink gets us on a more offensive footing. One thing to remember is that you'll lose some altitude during each jink. So use caution jinking down within 1500 to 2000 feet of the floor. Now let's try this out in an exercise that brings everything together. The medium range DBFM exercise starts with the 6000 foot perch. The fighter's objective in this exercise is simple. Survive. If you're not familiar with the perch setup, check out these two videos which cover the two types of perch setups. There will be links in the description. Like all the BFM exercises used by the USAF, you're free to add your own parameters. I suggest adding a win objective for the fighter of surviving to 720 degrees of turn after fights on is called. This is two times around a circle. So if you call fights on at one of the cardinal points on the compass, you just need to pass by that point twice to pass the exercise. The initial move listed in the official manual is the brake turn, which is defined like this. Select max afterburner, set the LV on or slightly below the bandit, and pull to target G, 5 to 5.5. If you remember back to our EM diagram, that's how we get on our sustained rate turn. Doing this exercise with the bandit limited to just mill power, you can win by just maintaining this sustained rate turn. The bandit will have to cash in all his energy to get a gun solution. If you survive that, you can go right back to a sustained rate turn and be at an energy advantage he won't be able to overcome. Going with an unlimited bandit, you'll probably have to endure some more attacks, but the sustained rate turn is still the best way to reach victory. So pick some bandit limitations to match the fighter's skill level. One other thing I want to mention is that our F5s are a little heavier and about a foot longer than the T-38s they're standing in for. That's because they have a radar and a pair of cannons that a T-38 doesn't carry. So the F5's performance will be a little different than what's listed on the T-38's EM diagram. To get that performance as close as possible, I recommend setting the F5's fuel level to about one-third of a tank in the mission editor. So between 30 and 40% on the slider. Then set unlimited fuel under the options. You should be a lot closer to the chart this way. Let's do a quick recap. A sustained rate game plan will work for most offensive situations, so try to stick to that. If you find the bandit is closing into gun range, which is about 2,500 feet or less, and is about to take a shot, you have some tools available to make that shot harder. You can tighten down by pulling back on the stick to minimize your turn radius. This also turns your vulnerable rear quarter away from the bandit. There's also out-of-plane maneuvering to get you off the bandit's plane of motion and spoil his aim. For this, you unload the jet, reset your lift vector away from the bandit, and then pull onto the new plane of motion. The bandit will have to reset to try for another gun solution, which buys you time. Drawing out a defensive fight is how you win. As a last resort, you can try some jinx. A jink is like a combination of a tightened down and out of plane maneuver. Just like with the OOP, we start by unloading the jet and putting the throttle on idle. Then rotate your lift vector off of the bandit and pull the stick back hard to generate closure and angle problems for the bandit. Keep an eye on the bandit's nose. If his nose is still pointed at you, then a follow-on jink is needed. But once he goes into lag, watch for those reversal cues. No matter what, don't give up, and keep giving the bandit problems to deal with. 
You can practice all these maneuvers in the medium range DBFM exercise. This starts with a 6,000 foot perch setup and a break turn into a sustained rate game plan. I recommend setting a win condition of 720 degrees of turn from when fights on is called, so that you have a goal to work towards. If you've been following this series, then you might remember that in this offensive BFM video, we had an exercise where the bandit needed to reach 720 degrees of turn to escape. That matches up nicely with this exercise. If you want an increased challenge, you can combine that offensive exercise with this one. That way one of you can practice offensive BFM while the other gets to practice DBFM. No matter how you decide to go about it, it's a good idea to end each exercise with a short debrief. That way each of you can go over what it looked like from your point of view and find ways to improve in the next set. As always, I appreciate you taking the time to watch this and hope you found it useful.